with just under six weeks to the U.S. presidential election, Donald Trump has again refused to guarantee a peaceful transition of power if he loses. He's tried to cast doubt on the legitimacy of the election because of his concerns about mail-in voting, which Democrats have encouraged because of the pandemic. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. I and, understand that, but and, people are rioting. Do you oh, commit no, to making no, sure that there's a no, peaceful wanna, transfer of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. And that's earned him criticism, even from within his own Republican Party. A former presidential hopeful, Mitt Romney, says any hesitation in the peaceful transfer of power is unthinkable. And this was Joe Biden's reaction. What country are we in? Look, uh, he says the most irrational things. I, I don't know what to say about it, but it does surprise me. So Mark joins us from Washington, D.C. for more on this. As we heard there, Simon, Joe Biden almost lost for words to how to respond. How real are the concerns that Mr. Trump might really not relinquish power if he were to lose? Well, look, these are concerns, uh, Steve, and they've been around for several months, uh, but we have never heard the president faced with a binary yes or no uh, answer to a question. He was asked at the start of that exchange, will you commit to a peaceful transfer of power if you lose? To which his answer was, well, we'll see what happens. That's not the answer to the question in the United States, whose constitution uh, has for more than 200 years guaranteed the peaceful transfer of power. It is absolutely the hallmark of American democracy. And so this idea that he might not uh, go uh, along with a peaceful transfer of power if he loses the election because he believes that fraudulent postal ballots may have cost him the vote is certainly a major new development along America's campaign trail, fueled as it is by his entirely unsubstantiated claim that millions of votes are cast fraudulently in American presidential elections. There is no evidence to support that claim whatsoever. And uh, I mean, you know, it is ironic that hours after President Trump said uh, that we'd have to wait and see what happens in November with regard to a peaceful transfer of power, he was tweeting law and order with regard to the very voluble situation on the streets of Louisville, Kentucky, where there's been unrest overnight. But, you know, law and order, I mean, the key to law and order in the United States is the peaceful transfer of power. So this is a big moment for Joe Biden to try and exploit and a challenge for people like Mike Pence, the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, others in Donald Trump's inner circle who can all expect to be asked in the hours ahead whether they agree with the President of the United States that there might be circumstances under which there won't be a peaceful transfer of power here. And Simon, based upon that claim of the president's that this election is going to be rife with fraud, he says that he thinks the result might just end up in the Supreme Court. Is this an attempt to get his candidate, he hasn't named it, him or her yet, but is, is it an attempt to get them in before that election? Well, it's definitely playing into his desire to get her in. We do now know it is going to be a her. She's going to have her identity unveiled to the public on Saturday uh, at the White House to fill the seat vacated by the sad death last week uh, of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, look, I mean, if you only had eight justices on the Supreme Court and a contested election ended up in the court as the 2000 election between George W. Bush and Al Gore uh, found its way to the nation's highest court. That's a potential problem because if the justice is split 4-4, you've absolutely got the makings of a constitutional crisis. There are other reasons why President Trump wants to get that justice uh, through the United States Senate, because if he does lose in November, uh, a conservative presence on the court will extend the ideological life of his presidency, potentially for decades to come. But there's also no question that yesterday here he indicated that he is fueled by the notion that he may end up legally challenging the outcome of this vote and it could go to the Supreme Court in rushing to unveil this nominee uh, this weekend here in Washington, D.C. So we're in for some very tense weeks ahead here.
We certainly are indeed. Simon, thank you very much for that. Simon Marks there reporting from Washington, D.C.